Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing this set of Rivco passenger armrests onto a 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. The Rivco passenger armrest kit comes with everything you need for successful installation. With the bike on the center stand, open your trunk lid and remove the six Phillips screws shown here. It's a good idea to keep these screws in a bowl or other container because you will need these for reassembly. When removing the two screws at the top, make note that these screws are longer than the other two screws. That's very important when you go back to reassemble. So the longer screws go at the top. On the side of the trunk lid, just underneath the armrest pad, you'll find a small Phillips screw. Go ahead and remove this on both sides of the trunk lid. With those two screws removed, you can now pop out those armrest pads as shown. Kind of start at the bottom edge and pull forward and they'll release and then you can kind of lift off the entire backrest pad as shown. Now there's an electrical connector at the top and the easiest way for me to remove this is to simply uh, slide the entire connector off of the plastic stay. Okay right here is the little tab that you have to kind of lift up on and that releases this connector from the stay here you can see the plastic stay I'm referring to. You'll notice another small tab on the other side of the connector, and if you press on that, you'll be able to separate the two halves of the connector. Now once you've disconnected the connector, you can just kind of set the backrest upside down in the back seat or on a workbench, and you want to remove the two small Phillips screws that hold the uh, passenger armrest plugs in place. Now these screws are even smaller than the other ones we removed earlier, so you want to make sure to keep those in a separate place. And you can just kind of push forward and down on that uh, plug and it will come out as shown. An easy way to keep up with those little screws is just go ahead and reinstall them back into the plug. Now you can slide the connector back onto the stay and then reconnect the electrical connector on the backrest because we're going to basically put the backrest back in place. Okay, you can see here the bottom of that uh, backrest is still loose. And what we want to do is we want to insert this bracket through the opening in the pad like this. And it's going to face downward. And then this bracket is going to line up these holes right here. It's a good idea to place a towel on top of the saddlebag just to protect the paint. And also on the inside hinge underneath where you're going to be installing these nuts. Next, we're going to be installing these metal sleeves. The metal sleeves will go into these two holes in the trunk hinge. Now you'll notice the one at the rear is an oval shape and the one at the front is round. Now on some gold wings, uh, that sleeve can be a really tight fit in that front hole and you might have to ream it out with a drill bit or a, a round file. I'm using a quarter inch bolt here with a little nut on the end and I'm just putting the sleeve over it and just gently tapping it into that front hole and that worked really, really well. Now we're ready to install the 6x30 Allen screws and you basically are going to put one in each of those two holes. You want to make sure you put the sleeve uh, into that second, that rear, that oval hole and then stick the screw with a flat washer on the end uh, into each of those holes. You want to hold your finger behind it just to keep those little sleeves from poking through the back. Now we're ready to install these oval spacers on the inside of the trunk lid. Hold your finger over the head of the bolts you just installed and slip that spacer over the bolts on the inside of the trunk. Now you can install those lock nuts on the end of those bolts. I'm using a 10 millimeter open end wrench to hold the nut while I turn the bolts from the outside using a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. 
I'm showing you installation on the left side of the bike, but you'll repeat this exact same process for the right side as well. Then pull those little uh, pads back into place and then replace the six screws that hold the backrest pad in place. Remember, the longer screws go on top. Now we're ready to install the backrest cover plate. Use the one marked for the appropriate side of the bike and slip it over the bracket as shown. Here you can see the cover plate that goes on the outside of the mounting bracket and it fits over that mounting bracket. And then using the armrest, it goes on the inside. Make sure you use the L for the left side. And then using two of the 6x16 screws, uh, you can then use your 5mm Allen wrench to tighten these down to Rivco specs. And once you've got those tightened, you're basically done with the installation. It's possible to add a couple of inches of room between the two armrests. To do this, we'll need to mount the left armrest pad on the right side and vice versa. For the wider mounting option, we'll need to remove the base mounting plate on each armrest. You can use a 3 16 Allen wrench or socket to remove this base plate. If you lift the armrest pad from the base plate, you'll notice a locating dowel. Now we're going to move this dowel to the other hole. You'll see two holes and you want to pull it out and put it in the other hole and then simply remount the base plate back onto the armrest. You may want to use a little drop of blue thread lock on that screw before you tighten it uh, and the tighter you make it, the tighter it's going to be for the armrest to swing out. Now once you've relocated those dowel pins, we're ready to reinstall the armrest. Here you'll see I'm putting the mounting bracket cover plate on the inside this time. And we're going to put the right side armrest on the left side of the bike and it will now mount to the outside of the mounting bracket. Which means the screws will now go in from the inside. So basically you just reattach the screws, tighten everything to Rivco specs, and you've successfully increased the distance between the armrests by an inch and a half to two inches. I want to talk to you today about the screws on your Goldwing because a lot of them might look like they're Phillips screws when they're actually JIS. And JIS stands for Japan Industry Standard. Now, you can get by with using a regular Phillips screwdriver to take out most of these screws. But if you've got one that's in really tight and you're really having a hard time getting it off, you could strip out the head of that screw. So I want you to consider looking into a set, they're not very expensive, of these JIS screwdrivers. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at several places. I'll put a link in the description down below. So my tip for you today is to invest in a set of JIS screwdrivers. Now, if you liked this cruise man's tip and you enjoyed this video, please take a second to click the little subscribe button down below and don't forget to click on the bell and the bell will notify you when we put up new videos. Thanks again for joining us on Cruise Man's Garage.